SEO, SEO, SEO. We're gonna talk about SEO today. That is search engine optimization. Actually, I wanna start talking about SEO today because I did a video about SEO and it was like 30 minutes long and I want you to be able to go directly to an answer to your question. So check the links below and I'm gonna link out to other videos I do on SEO. Today, it's me focus on what is SEO, picking your keywords, planning them out, that kind of thing. I'll do other videos that talk about titles and descriptions and how many characters and words and all that. So just check and find a title that really fits the space that you're in. So the reason why SEO is so important is it's how people naturally find your site because you're optimizing your website for search engines. So search engines like Google, back in the day it was Ask Jeeves and Yahoo and hey, well, I know, I'm really getting myself old with some of those names. Nowadays, it's pretty much Google. And one of the things I love about Google is long ago, they decided that they were gonna be the premier search engine. They're gonna be the place that people go. And they know, just like every industry, if you give people what they want, they're going to come back. So they have spent so much time and resources and energy to create an algorithm, an algorithm that they're constantly changing, which drives marketers mad, but an algorithm that will show a result that is most likely to be what you want to answer your question. So back when we start, I started doing SEO, it was the game of, if you could have your keyword in your website more than anyone else, you would show up first. Now that is called black hat tricks today. And you don't wanna do that. If you try to keyword stuff like that, you could get your website blocked. Not worth it, do not pass go, do not collect 200 bucks, don't do it, stay away. How you really want to do it. And when we first started seeing this was when blogs came. If you, if you ever heard people say, you have to have a blog, you have to have a blog, you have to have a blog. The reason why is blogs naturally fall on one keyword. They naturally fall on a very specific topic or answering a very specific question. Blogs can be FAQs, resources, insider tips, case studies, white papers, all that. So when I say blog, it is any place where you have a article or a page that's specifically targeted to one thing. That's where the power of SEO happens. Now, if you go on Google, you see something called snippets, where they have a question and it pops up like a mini answer. Those are all organically. Those are chosen by Google and you can get in those. If you're interested in that, let me know and I can do a video on it. But that is something that's not paid. Now, how Google decides to show your website and to move it up is one, what keywords you have on the page and the keyword variations. Um, they also take into account how long someone stays on your page. So if someone goes to your page and it bounces right off, they're like, okay, that one was invaluable and it bumps it down. The more someone can go on your page and the longer they stay, the better to Google. That is why having like video clips on a page are really good because people will sit back and watch the video. That's also why word count and having good and content and long form content can be important as well. Long form content usually doesn't land on home pages or landing sales landing pages, which is why those kind of blog functions are good because you can have this long form content and people usually will land on those pages first organically and then go backwards and check out your site about your homepage or about you or something like that. So you want to have one specific keyword per page. I know that sounds crazy, but you really just want one. Now you can have keyword variations and you can have up to 20 keyword variations. So let's say, you know, you have big business and corporation you know, you can kind of do that, but if you can take those and pull them out to even more keyword variations, so business, businesses, biz, whatever it is, then you want to maybe have a page that has talks about big business and one that talks about corporations. It's, it's all a choice. And so what I usually do with clients is this, if they already have their site done, we'll do an Excel doc, usually a Google Sheets, and it will have the page name, 
the page URL link, the main keyword, keyword variations, the title, the description, and the word count. Because if a page doesn't have enough word count, then we go back and work on that. That's a video for probably another day. I don't think I'll get in, into that in this 10 minute video. So check that out if you're interested in that. Reason why we do that is we want one keyword per page. So usually the homepage's keyword is your company name. And then you can put other keywords to other pages and you wanna make the best choice. So sometimes you'll be like, man, this one can go between this one or this one. Pick the one you think that will have the answer to the question or convert the most. If you have a, like a lot of variations to one keyword, then that's when you can split it up and say, I need to create a new page. Now, companies that are planning out their content and they know they're gonna slowly give more content to a site, and you constantly do wanna be updating your site and giving more content and more pages to it because then Google says it's a living organism and the site is active. So that's why it is still important to have new content or change content on a site so Google sees that it's not just a stagnant site. They want sites that are being used and active and alive and up to date. Speaking of to date, this stuff changes constantly. So this video was recorded in fall of 22. So if you're seeing this years from now, um, you want to do research because these numbers and stuff are constantly changing and Google is constantly changing on us without telling us. Um, and we just kind of have to figure it out and, and see what's working and not. It's, it's a game they like to play. Okay, so on a page, you want, and this, this varies, some experts say five, no more than five or 10% of your content can be keywords or keyword variations. Other people say 1%. So 1% would be if you had a page of 300 words, and I'm gonna go into why you need at least 300 words, but if you have 300 words on a page, that's only using your keyword three times. So that's something to really consider is, the amount of content. I think that's why that number is so weird compared to what expert you you talk to is because how much content, if you have more content, you can have more keywords in there versus less content. It looks kind of funky because you don't want a keyword stuff. And Google is really specific on that. You want your keywords to naturally fall within the content and make sense because if your content's not helpful, makes sense, then you it's totally wasteful and it's not going to be worthwhile. So I'm checking the time because I want to be respectful for the time. So we're going to stop here and I'm going to do start next on the next video on website text and writing your text for your site. One thing I do want to make sure I touch on is that if you, I talked about if you already have a website and listing out your pages and kind of working on what your keywords are and then updating them on your site, if you're planning out content, the best way you can plan out content is to think about what your clients are asking. So Google wants people to have answers to the questions. So if you can specifically answer the question for your client, then your page is gonna be ranked higher. So I'm gonna give you an example of this. If you have a website about Subaru, I don't know, Ford and Chevy, Google's not really gonna know what to do with it. But if you have a page all about Subaru and someone's searching about Subarus, you're likely to pop up. Now Subaru has a function called eyesight. Eyesight's what notifies you in the lanes. So if someone searches about Subaru eyesight, that page is gonna show up more. Now Subaru eyesight messes up in construction zones. So if you have a page talking about why Subaru eyesight messes up in construction zones, that page is gonna pop up even higher than everything else. So having pages that specifically answer your client's questions where you can pop up higher in Google is so utterly important. So a lot of times when I'm planning out content or planning out pages, that's where I start with clients. We start with looking at what headaches clients have, what questions are they asking, what are they typing into Google? And typing into Google is really important because someone might not know that Subaru's cameras are called eyesight. So you want to use keyword variations in that page about eyesight that has to do with cameras and that kind of thing. So you wanna look at all, what words would someone use if they did not know your industry word? And I see that mistake all the time. Well, people will use some high-end industry lingo 
that the common person might not have easy access to or they might not know or they might type something simpler in. So it is worthwhile to really look at it and see what is your client going to do? Your The customer that you really, really want, what are they searching for? What is their pain point? We all know that a lot of times what people say is their problem is not really their problem or what they think their solution is. There's actually a better solution. So know that as well. You want to lead people from their pain point to that you are the solution to that pain point and that you are the expert about that pain point. And that's where this organic SEO really shines and why it's so important to be part of your online strategy and your client customer relation, whatever strategy you have online. If you want people to come to you, having a strategy and really focusing and growing over time, your organic SEO is a game changer.